Do your model kits need guns? Lots of guns? Well, thankfully, that is where the 30 minute missions customized weapons come in. So I'm going to be taking a look at this one today. This is the Heavy Weapons 1. And just like it says right there in the front of the box, this is perfect for your 144th scale model. Whether it be Gundam or 30 minute missions, and I'm also going to try it with similar sized models as well, including the likes of Kyokai Senki. Anyway, as usual, this ride here I would not have if it wasn't for those awesome people over at Hobby Link Japan, so I will throw a link down there in the description so you can get one of your own. Alright, so cracking the box open and what we get inside of this is the usual two bags of runners, all in grey. I see some missile pods which always make me super, super happy and the instructions are super simple. So it seems like in the end, we'll get a big old backpack of heavy weapons out of this, a big shield, and some close quarters weaponry. Well, let's get them out. When it comes to the build on this, this is the normal, simple, but effective 30 minute mission style build. So everything's made out of just a couple of parts and they slot together perfectly. When I built this, I just did the simple way of snip off the runner, snip off the knobs, and a bit of the nail rubby rubby rubby, which as ridiculous as it sounds, works really well. So when it does come to building the individual elements, first off we've got this right here, which is a barrel. There is the shooty end, and around the other side we've got the usual kind of attachment we see on these 30 minute mission kits. Next up we've got the segment which makes up the main body of that weapon. Again, a ton of attachment points as you'd expect all over the side, looking like a little bit of a kind of revolver drum style thing right there. A bunch of slots in the top, 3mm round side, and we do have slots and C-clips on the bottom. As per the box, the way you build this, you just pop the barrel onto it, and there you've got your absolutely huge cannon. Next up in here then is the missile pod, and this to me is the highlight of this kit. There is the six missile segments that are slot on in like that. You close up the other side just like so, and there is the missiles inside of it with that heavy arms flare, or dual Gundam if you prefer. Then on the other side, you just pop in Six more of these on this little flap with a C-clip bottom. And then that just attaches on just like so. And there we got that cool missile pod. It opens up just like so. Closes like that. So I guess you can have the flap opening to the bottom. Or you can have the flap opening to the top in whichever way you like. I can just imagine all of those painted in a nice orange. That's usually the way to go. In order to get these attached, we do have this little adapter segment pops on like so. So this, well, of course that can pop onto any 3mm hole on anything that you want. But in this case, it is going to be that backpack. And they attach on to the sides of that canister, just like so. There is the second one popping on just like that. And I have these on completely upside down. So these will be opening up the way. So if you do want... Oh wait, they're both two completely directions, so you can do it whichever way that you want. The instructions here says down the way, so who am I to argue with that? So I'm going to flip around. Actually, the instructions say up the way. Flip that one around, flip this one around, and that is what it's meant to look like. Once again, these pop open just like so for that hail of missiles. Attaching the cannons, once again, according to the instructions, involves attaching a C-clip down back. You could probably pop it up front, depending on where you want them to pivot from and how far over the shoulder you want them going. They then pop here, but once again, with these kits, you can stick them anywhere that peg will fit. So there's that big old backpack complete, and I love this thing. That's nice. So trying out with some 144th scale kits first, starting off with a fairly regular-ish 30 minute missions. I think this one's a little bit smaller. This is the Volpa Nova. So first off, getting that up in the air because otherwise, I feel like it might have a little bit of issue holding up a backpack so heavy. Now I've never reviewed this actual kit. It is very, very nice as they usually are. And one cool thing about this little kit right here is it does have a little bit of a kind of gimmick round back where its backpack goes. So normally we've got this little one segment, but this can actually drop down just like so to reveal the two slot, which is exactly what we'll be needing. This backpack then just slots in just like so. And this is huge on this kit because it is kind of considered for some of the bigger kits. So that right there is what it looks like. We have movement on these that can move up and down just like so. These can rotate so they can actually tilt backwards like so. So they can fire directly up into the air. Or you can have them just come over the shoulder and open up just like so. Now I did mention earlier on that you can actually choose how these attach on. So I kind of do feel like on a smaller kit like this, it would be a little bit better if we did adjust them slightly towards the back. So they'll attach on like so, and oh wait, they lose their movement when attached on like that. 
So yeah, no motion if they are attached in there. So they'll either be pointing down. Yeah, just pointing down. So on a kit like this, looking a little bit on the too large side. But like I mentioned, these Volpanovas are quite small. They're just side by side with a Gundam. So let's try this backpack out with the Calabarn. So popping this on is the usual thing. We just need to get rid of that backpack with the awesome broom cannon. Once that's off, we've got the two holes in the back that you just plug this into like so. And this actually works out quite well. Definitely a better fit than what we saw in the Volpanova. So two big cannons and two missile pods up on the back of the Calabarn. Which actually gives it a little bit of a gun cannon feel. Gun Calabarn even. So this can do everything we saw before. Cannons up and down. They can rotate slightly. Slightly? Slightly side to side like so and then we've got these cannon cannon I mean missile pods up here that open up just like so with all of those missiles inside So according to the box the intended mecha for using this stuff on is this right here this absolutely giant 30 minute missions kit right here so let's see if we do Move around to the back. Yeah, there is the backpack adapter that we need pop that in then just like so, so extremely perfect fit as you'd expect. And that looks a lot more, I guess, in scale with this big beast. So there is what it looks like up there in the back and this looks absolutely perfect. You can really tell this was designed with this particular mecha in mind. It just fits with the design, the shape, everything from both the front and the back. It looks absolutely killer. So far, so good. So it's about time to move on to the next thing that's inside of this box. But wait, I almost forgot to try it out with this particular mecha right here. This is the Protogoyo from Kyokai Senki or Amem Warrior. So this doesn't have the usual back attachment right here, nor does it underneath. However, there is another option with the missile pods in here. So harvesting those missile pods off the back of this big old beast right here, we actually have these little adapter, or should I say like bracket segments that attach onto the side, holding two of these together. Now I'm gonna hold these open just so I know I'm attaching these on wrong so they don't block each other when they open. That's what it looks like attached together. We do have one little adapter in here, which is a three millimeter two c-clip which should work and up on the shoulders of the protogoyo right here we do have some nicely placed c-clips so popping that on like so and now we've got this absolutely massive quad missile pod up on its shoulder this is one of the coolest 30 minute missions weapons to date i love it so next up in here we've got the build of the melee weapon so let's start out with the shield assembly here is simple just like you would have seen before snip it off of the runner in the usual way you would do that then it is mainly just two pieces. This bit slots on here just like so, a big armor section in the middle. And there is a, well, a whole bunch of attachment points around back, but the instruction says to use this C-clip just like that. So you got a three millimeter peg that can actually move up and down just like that. So that is pretty simple. You do have a little bit of a claw section down bottom. It doesn't move, but it does look nice and cool for grabbing and attacking things. C-clip up top, so that means you can actually attach two top to top or even more. Each time, I always forget to not just order one of these kits. You need multiple. So onto the shield now, and as is always the case with 30 minute missions, this right here is covered in three millimeter C-clips, more three millimeters, but I'm gonna attach it on the way that it says inside the manual, which is with this little bit right here, on to this particular weapon right here. So the Pro Videl right here has this big old cable attaching power into its weapon, so I'm just gonna unplug that and then just directly, huh, I thought we we're gonna be attaching this bit on right here, but we actually need another adapter one of which came with this kit, but I don't think I've just left on the kit right now. Actually, I'm just gonna steal this one right from here because it's the exact same type. That pops into uh, this little circular segment like so, and that then just pops on to the back of the arm, just like so, and I'm just gonna... So that right there is what the shield looks like attached onto the Providel, and this, you can tell, is designed for this kit. Once again, it just fits onto that weapon perfectly, and absolutely enhances it. It goes from looking like a almost bare weapon that could be damaged easily to a big combination of a defensive weapon and a long range weapon. That works out so, so perfectly. Nice. So continuing through the kits with this, there is the Volpanova, which is pretty much the size of the shield itself. So attaching this on should be hilarious. The attachment point isn't too flexible on this kit, but still you can actually get it in there. And this will definitely Definitely work with this kit. Looking good. Kind of looks like a almost mindless drone robot that's just kind of marching forward as cannon fodder defensively. Next up then is the Calabar. Now we'll mention that this has slot 
segments for its shields, not a circular one. So I'm gonna have to find someone else, and that someone else is gonna be the Rubris Jew. So let's just attach that on. And this almost, almost weighs quite evenly with the big old shield arm it has already. So that's a pretty cool fit. It does feel like it would be a little bit nicer further down the arm. Nah, no, that's a good weighting right there. That looks pretty damn good. And finally, once again, the big old Protogoyo. So this does have a little bit of a part in the back of its arm. Thankfully, we can angle this because... Oh, eventually that did work out in the end and that is what it looks like attached on there. So this is very usable in pretty much everything. If you want a big, massive slab of a shield and of course, you can paint it to match. So next on the agenda right here is a pair of weapons. So I'm going to do these together because they're super simple. We've got an axe and a big old sword. Both of these are just two parts, so they attach together like... So, and by the look of the tab at the bottom of this, this is what's going to be extending said length. Anyway, that is two parts attached together and has a handy dandy handle here, but I have a feeling we'll be getting that combined. Alright, so there is the pair of weapons complete, and as you'd expect, these actually do attach together into an even bigger awesome sword that definitely has a little bit of a iron-blooded orphans vibe to me. So first up, trying it with the Volpanova, it just slides on into the hand just like so. So that is the standard handle, and that is what it looks like. A nice big old sword, splits in half just like so, and what we've got is something a little bit like a heat hawk. It does kind of rotate in the hand a little bit, once again because it's a circular peg in a square hole. And attaching the big side of this sword, or the big half of this sword into the hand, involves taking the hand apart. This fits absolutely perfectly into a 30 minute missions hand like so, it doesn't slide around at all. Pop back on the back, pop it into the hand, and that is what the pair of weapons looks like when they are split in half. So, some cool options right here. So now that we've tried out everything, I want to pop everything all at once onto one particular kit so you can see what it all looks like equipped. Now I did grab the Barbie because I thought the sword would look pretty good with it, but I always forget this does not have the standard backpack adapter, so that means you're not able to use the backpack on a kit like that. So I just defaulted to Ariel, which always works out so well. It's got everything that you need. It's got all the standard Gundam and 144th scale mecha stuff on it. So after slapping on the backpack, the shield, and the sword, this is what you get. This is a very, very nice loadout. It is meant to be giant weapons for using with that big old Providel type Rex, but it works so, so well with Gundam model kits as well. Anyway, thank you so, so much for watching. If you do want one of your own, link is down there in the description, and I will see you next time. As always, this video right here would not have been possible without each and every single one of you guys who watches my videos and all of these awesome people right here who help out on the channel memberships and over on Patreon, including Ten Soldier YT, Abraxas, Caleb Engelhart, Dashiell Marmion, Golel Rockstar, Joe, Lauren Seahack, Orgy95061, Ten Soldier YT again, and Van Fawn.